tonight we bring you The Old Maid and the Thief, a grotesque opera by Giancarlo Menotti. Please relax as we invite you to join us in a quaint town in upstate New York in the spring of 1957. It is late afternoon in Mr. Todd's parlor. A visitor is just arriving. Good day, Mr. Pinkerton. Mr. Todd, good day. Set down your raincoat, your umbrella. Make yourself comfortable and tell me the news while I make some tea. Don't trouble yourself for me. No trouble at all. The water is boiling in the kettle. Isn't the weather awful, awful, awful? 
It seems that the postman brought a letter to Miss Paxton. When she saw the writing, down she fell with a cry. And nobody knows why, and nobody knows why. You're not trying to hide it from Mr. me. Todd. Not I. I assure you, nobody knows why. Here is your tea. Thank you. How many lumps? Two. Lemon or cream? Cream, if you please. Isn't the weather awful? She's fat. <laughs> She's vulgar. She's sinister. Isn't the weather awful? This is a lonely time. Oh, this is a lonely life. A man, a man wrecked my life. I know. That was 20 years ago. You mean 17. So was my life wrecked by a man. I know that was 20 years ago. My lover sailed to be a sailor of the sea. But said I was the ship on which to fix his mast. Alas, the sea is vast and full of many a ship. He sailed on his first trip. That's when I saw him land. And I was the book on which to found his creed. My last was sailed to be a sailor of the sea. A sailor this time he took to read and read and read. But said I was the ship. But a broken promise And why, and why should, should God, God keep his promise If men all forget their own Forget their own T'was man, not God, not God the first Who trod upon his promise since then, since then, since then, since then has truth flown from us, and life is but a broken Letitia. Somebody knocked at the back door. I'll go and see. Who can it be? Sir! Sir! Well, then, who is it? It is a man. A man? What does he want? Speak to you in straight 
privacy. The idea. Don't you see? I am having tea with Mr. Pinkerton. Tell him to come back later. Not on my account. It's time for me to go home anyhow. So soon. It was such a short afternoon. Goodbye then, Mr. Pinkerton. Mr. Todd, good day. Your raincoat, your umbrella, come soon again. Well, thank you. Good day. This way, goodbye. Goodbye. God bless him. Well, ask the visitor to come in. Sir, he's not a visitor. He's only a beggar. A beggar. Give him a nickel and send him away. But he's so young and handsome. Don't send him away. It would be a sin. What shall I do then? Be a Christian. Ask him in. What will the neighbors say? Who cares? Just take a look at him. The next morning, Letitia's busy with her pots and pans when Mr. Todd comes into the kitchen. Good day, Letitia. Good morning, sir. Why up so early? Last night I felt so excited I could not sleep a wink. 
But is he still asleep? Quite asleep, I think. He has not made a sound. Wasn't he charming last night? And clever. And, clever, and, funny, and funny. And bright and profound. Bright and profound. I never, never heard, heard such funny jokes, jokes as he told us after dinner. The one about the sailor. The one about the sinner. The one about the tailor. <laughs> <laughs> ah. How shall I stand it today to see him go away? This town will be at home. And what gloom in this house. Well then, speak up. Why don't you ask him to stay another week? What shall the neighbors say? They soon will see that we are three. This is my strategy. Don't you have dozens of uncles and cousins? Say that he's one of them. Once they see his aspect, they will suspect. He consent. A hungry man is his limit. But who shall make him the proposition? I do not tell. I am in no position. It's your affair. I think you'd better. I'll write a letter. Bob's breakfast is ready, and Letitia proudly carries the heaping tray into the guest room where Bob lies drowsily in bed. Good morning! Hey! Good morning, Bob! No. Please. Wake Don't up! This... Your 
A few minutes later, Mr. Todd ventures out of the house. Down the block, whom does he see approaching? Why, his friend, Mr. Pinkerton? Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! Mr. Pinkerton, good morning. Have you heard? Have you read? Most terrible thief has fled from the county jail of Timberville. The town is in great fear, for he was seen not far from here. He's the terror of the nation. He is one to rob and kill at the slightest provocation. Keep all the doors locked, keep all the windows closed. He has committed crime after crime for his little as a dime. Keep all the doors locked. Keep all the windows closed. A thief, a murderer, and what does he look like? Tall and slender, hair blonde and shaggy, light complexion, southern inflection, and altogether handsome. Tall and slender, hmm. Hair blonde and shaggy, okay. light complexion, hmm. southern inflection, and tall together handsome. Oh dear me, oh dear me, I must, I must, I must run home. Why such hurry? I want to warn Latisha right away. Goodbye. Goodbye. But by the way, that old Miss Perkins who always spies on everybody outright said last night you had a male guest overnight. Oh, Timmy, yes, a great surprise. Back from Australia, my cousin Steve has just arrived. A poor sick man, he won't see anyone, for he's in mourning. I'm helping him all that I can, but he'll be going away, I believe, this very morning. Mr. Todd can't hurry home quickly enough for the similarity of Bob's appearance and the description Mr. Pinkerton gave the escaped criminal has given plenty of cause for alarm. Into the front door he flies and into the parlor where Letitia is dusting. Letitia, 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 Letitia. Mr. Todd. Have you read? Have you read? No. What is the matter? Is he still upstairs? Yes. He's getting dressed. But what has happened? Are you ill? Oh, my dear, let me calm down. We must get rid immediately of our guests. In town I met Mr. Pinkerton 
frightfully distressed. Who told me a thief has fled from the county jail of Timberville? A thief, a murderer, he said. He was seen not far from here. And my dear, he's tall and slender, hair blonde and shaggy, light complexion, southern inflection, and altogether handsome. <laughs> yes, it is he. Goodness gracious! Think of it. He might have murdered us last night. I thought he did look strange. What shall we do now? Yes. How can we explain our presence here? Already I have made Mr. Pinkerton believe that he is my cousin Steve. We must be great tacticians and rid ourselves of him in a more subtle way, as if we'd no suspicions. But I just begged him to stay with us another week. And did he accept? He did. What cheek. Tisha, you must be out of your mind. A gentleman of my kind to entertain a fugitive. He'll rob and kill me in my own bed. Since he did not rob and murder us last night, why should he tonight? Letitia, you're talking through your head. For that matter, to be killed by a man would really be much better than to live without one. Letitia, how shocking! like two flies. Not if we make him feel secure. He'll soon find out I'm poor and lose all interest in me. Make him believe you're rich. Don't give yourself away. Act as if you would money aplenty. And even let him have some of it. A little every day, to day ten dollars, tomorrow twenty. But we'll contrive to keep his interests alive. But where to find the money? Aren't you the treasurer of the Nomission Society? Gentlemen's Club. Lord Almighty, do you suggest that I should steal? Horror! No, I only meant to borrow. And what does that imply? Take all the money you need for this coming week. Next month we'll Put it back, and no one shall ever know of it. No one shall ever know of it. Your argument is weak, but so am I. I don't see what is wrong with it. The end justifies the means. I'll never have the nerve. He's coming!
The days pass by. Bob remains a guest in Mr. Todd's house. A week later, we find Letitia in the kitchen, taking pains, mending, and then pressing a pair of well-worn trousers. Bob's, of course. A little later in the day, Mr. Todd is sitting on his front porch when Mr. Pinkerton rushes up the steps in breathless excitement. Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! Mr. Pinkerton, won't you sit down? Have you heard? Have you read? 
The thief is still hiding in town and has robbed many houses in the neighborhood. He's daring, quick, and shrewd. You're not safe even none to your room. Keep all the doors locked. Keep all the windows closed. Had someone had any proof? Miss Manning has missed lots of money. Miss Paxton has not seen her purse since that morning you came for a visit. There is no more doubt. The robber must be here about. And since our church meeting on Monday, the Sunday collection is missing, we, we must, must ask, ask the, the police, police for protection. protection. We must. We must. We, we must. <laughs> 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 Isn't the weather awful? Awful. Awful. But by the way, how is your cousin? Is he still so very, very ill? I'm afraid that he never will be very, very well. You never can tell. You never can tell. A few days go by. Mr. Todd is sitting in his parlor. Letitia's in the kitchen, getting ready to go upstairs with the customary morning tray so that Bob can have his breakfast in bed as usual. Meanwhile, Bob, up in his room, prompted by a desire to take to the road again, is secretly making a bundle of his clothes. When the air sings of summer, I must wander again. Sweet landlord is the sky.
But what about my point of view? Here I have nothing to do From morning to night I don't read, I don't write I don't work, I don't think If at least I could have What? Well, just something to drink My dear, do you mean liquor? Mr. Tom! Don't shout that way! Bob threatens to go away if we don't buy him liquor! Liquor? Has he no pity? I who direct the prohibition committee. I, I, who founded the anti poos No, no, I must refuse. I must refuse. Has he no pity? Already I've stolen for him And now he demands that I spoil my good standing By publicly buying some liquor I must refuse, I must refuse I must refuse, I must refuse Shall we then lose our guest? It might be for the best This clearly shows that for me he has no use. His brazen request might be only an excuse to put your love to the test. Could this be true? Could love be so exacting? to do that I can't possibly handle without causing a scandal. Shall we then lose our guest? What else can you suggest? Is drinking a sin? Yes. Is stealing a sin? Yes. Sinning against the sin can be no sin. Do you mean raid the liquor store? Yes. But how? We'll break in from the window and out from the door. That sounds risky. Are you afraid? Not a shade. Two o'clock in the morning. The village is sleeping quietly. In front of the liquor store, all is deserted. But down the block, two stealthy figures are approaching. How 
many kinds of bottles, how many ways of committing the same sin. From this it's plain that most people's stomachs have more imagination than most people's brains. Virtue is mighty, but sin has variety. I heard a noise. That's just part of the orchestration. It isn't. It is. Don't raise your voice. Let's, Let's make, make our, our choice. choice. There were some bottles of gin. You hold the basket while I put them in. Let me do it. Careful. Careful, careful. <laughs> You silly fool, what have you done? Who's there? Somebody's coming. Hold on to your bottles and let us run. And let us run. The next morning, Mr. Todd is sitting in his parlor when Mr. Pinkerton bursts through the door. Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! Mr. Pinkerton, won't you sit down? Have you heard? Have you read? The whole town is in an uproar for last night. Someone raided the liquor store The owner roused out of bed Had a bottle smashed on his head The town is frightfully alarmed For the thief is at large and well armed Keep all the doors locked Keep all the windows closed They believe it is the same thief That has already caused such concern Keep all the doors locked all the windows closed. We need measures for stern and protective. They have hired a famous detective. They will search every corner in town. They will turn every house upside down. They won't dare search my house. They will search everyone and everywhere. They won't dare. They may came in my bedroom. Get up, you lazy sinner! I need your sheet to spread out on the table for it's almost time for dinner! Oh, la 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 la! La 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 la! Isn't the weather awful? By the way, how is your cousin? On the contrary, he's raving with fever. Is he still so very, very ill? I'm afraid that he never will be very, very well. You never can tell. You never can tell. Letitia. Pinkerton said. I didn't miss a word. I'm afraid he begins to suspect us. The police, the detective. Please will tell us. What, what shall, shall we, we do? do? What, what shall, shall we, we say? say?
Hurry, Mr. Todd. Hurry, Letitia. There is no time to lose. Out of the parlor, up the stairs to Bob's room. But they find the door closed. Knock at the door. No answer. Knock again. Let us go in. But now don't you worry, 
I won't let you down. I'll stand by to defend you. He's crazy. Of course we must act in a hurry. He's and crazy. Leave us his crazy. We'll run off together to France and lead a new life of adventure and crime and romance. He's crazy. crazy. He's crazy. You'll be my escort. I, your financial and moral support. But why should I run away? I've done nothing, have I? So, is your love for me so small you won't stand by? Small? I don't love you at all. <laughs> Ungrateful wretch, after all that I have done for you, you would see me in prison. As a matter of fact, I don't see any reason for keeping you out of it. I'll make you feel sorry for this. I shall call the police. I shall accuse you of larceny, robbery, and more. And who shall take heed of the tale you will tell? You come from nowhere. But who would dare suspect me of misdeed? My blood is the bluest in town. I'm respected as much as the mayor. I direct all the social affairs. And I'm constantly in touch with the city. I'm the chairman of every committee for hospitals, concerts, and fairs. So beware, my dear boy. So beware. For it would be a great pity if I were to send you to prison and see you condemned to the chair. I've nothing to fear, my conscience is clear. I'll tell them I tell, justice won't fail. Well, young man, you ask for your doom. Letitia, don't let him leave this room. I'll go and get the police. You've got me in. But I would like to help you, Bob dear. Come on. I've nothing to fear. But that's where you're wrong. I can tell at a glance you have not got a chance. Every circumstance is against you. That's the wrong point of view. What matters is my innocence. Mr. Todd can wield such influence. No one shall dare take your defense. Is there any justice? Justice, like every other symbol, has always been painted as stately, but is very nimble. Now winking at life, now dancing with death, he knows that his scale can be tipped by his breath. And it would be a great pity for one who's so young to be electrocuted or hung. You might well say farewell to sweet freedom to be shot in a cell in Sing Sing. And just 
free. Shall my conscience fail to prevail? You're not built to wilt in jail. My two legs will take me far. Mr. Todd has a car. You suggest that I run off with him. <laughs> no, 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 no. I suggest you run off with me. I know where he keeps the key. I'll never have peace. And Devil couldn't do what a woman can. Make a thief out of an honest man. Yes, let's go. Let's go. But as long as I'm taking the blame, I'll live up to my name and steal everything he possesses. Look there for his linen and his jackets in his finest. You'll look there for his money rings and watches. Don't forget to take the silver that is on the mantelpiece. Don't forget the traveling clock, the bedroom candlestick. Any minute we bring the police. Quick, 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 quick. quick, 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 quick. quick. A few minutes later, Mr. Todd returns to his house. And this, dear viewers, is the final scene. Letitia, Letitia, where are you? Hey, Letitia, it's I, Mr. Todd. She's getting hard of hearing. Letitia. How strangely silent the house. Letitia. Letitia. The room is empty. Letitia, Bob, I was just joking. You, nothing to fear. Letitia, Bob, what? My safe has been looted. My money is gone. Robbers, monsters, scoundrels, traitors, they have run off together. They have ransacked and plundered my house. They have even stolen my car. Help, help, help. Thieves, thieves. They have stolen my silver. They have stolen my clothes. Whippersnappers, devils, ruffians, blackguards, beasts, brutes, villains, wretches, snakes, swine.
Well, dear viewers, thank you for tuning in to what has been a most grotesque opera by Giancarlo Minotti. We advise you to keep all the doors locked and the windows closed, lest a scoundrel such as Bob should wander into your lives. Good night.